Okay, rolling, rolling, we're recording. Okay, this presentation is being recorded and will be posted later into the uh, recorded presentations link on this MyTCC page for this particular class. So on the schedule for today, we're going to do, I'm sorry for the misprint, in the ICR syllabus, it says 2223, uh, 2333 and 2334, that's wrong. It's 2334 for today, this is what the lab will do today, and we're going to do 235 next Wednesday. And this is this lab right here where we're going to, have our virtual machines, our PCA and PCB are the two virtual PCs that you have running on your screen here in the classroom. I'm also going to do, first of all, for those people that are going to be attending this virtually, asynchronously, how to get started in this lab in Packet Tracer. And then I will do the actual walkthrough in the lab on the real actual machinery that we have here uh, in the room. What I like to do when I print these labs is to take off the front page, which has all the IP addressing information. So it's handy later if I'm in the middle of the lab, I need to look back at the first page and verify an IP address or something of that nature. Okay, so first of all, the wonderful packet tracer. You guys that are gonna not gonna come to the lab and are gonna complete these labs with the packet tracer, there's a new version of packet tracer that was released in the past month or so, and it's absolutely wonderful. And I'm gonna bring it up here to show you how to get started on this lab with packet tracer. Now, the front page of the lab shows something which is a logical topology. And if I was going to start this lab in Packet Tracer using the, this is a default logical topology, he says we're supposed to have two switches and two PCs. And I'm going to drag those into the topology. It's going to look just like the front page of the lab. I'm having it in the exact same physical arrangement. So first of all, I'm going to pop, find two switches. So I'm going to go down to the bottom here and see by default, This bottom line here, we want to choose the switch. I'm going to click on the switch link. Rolling my mouse around. This is showing up on the okay, this is showing up on the recorded presentation. And I'm going to choose this first switch, and I'm just going to drag a couple of them up onto the screen. And now we need two PCs. So in this uh, near the bottom here, it's network devices. I'm going to roll a little bit to the right. In the devices, remember intermediary devices and in the devices. I'm going to click in the devices and choose a couple of PCs and drag them into the to here. Okay, now let's make it look like the diagram, the labeling on the diagram. I'm going to uh, uh, click on the switch. Now, if you're doing the packet tracer, you can you can get this to go into the CLI and do some erasing and stuff like in this lab, we're not going to do any configuration. We're just going to look at switch one a little bit. But what I want to do is make it say S1. As a default here, if I'll say S1, I'll go ahead and say S1 for this one too. Now notice that it says S1 matches the printout in the lab. I'll go to the second switch. I'll click the config tab and we'll make him S2. He likes to call the PCs PC0, PC1, stuff like that. We'll make it match. Uh, the PC on the left is going to be PC-A. And the PC on the right is going to be PC-B. Oops. Now let's make the connections. We have three Ethernet cables that are you guys here in the lab, they're already plugged up back there. Right? Because we can't, can't allow you to get your grubby grimies on the wires around here. I did it for you. You can do everything from your workstation. In Packet Tracer, we're going to use a icon down here to, to cr create the connections. This is orange jagged lightning bolt thing the connection icon. I'm going to give that a click. And then we're going to choose the solid black line. It resembles very much the solid black lines in the diagram here. I'm going to click on that. And I want to connect PCA to, what does it say on the front page here? PCA is supposed to connect to port number six of this first switch S1. So I'm going to simply click on the device. And the, it's a computer. It's got USB ports. It's got an RS-232 port. You guys from A+, what do we call those? COM1, COM2, stuff like that. 
Okay, on your real PCs, we use COM1 to go back to the rack. For the first console connection, we use COM4 to go back to this. But this is an Ethernet connection. So I'm going to click on Ethernet. Most PCs just have one Ethernet connection. The ones in this lab have three. One to go to the real internet and two to go back to our labs. And then I'm going to drag it up and click on the switch. And it says we're supposed to connect to number six. So I'll go down to six. Okay. Not that intuitive. It's a logical diagram. In a minute after I finish this, we're going to go to the super cool packet tracer physical mode. And it's going to be more like getting your hands on the set. You're going to drag the cable up and you're going to push it into the socket. And you're going to see the cable droop down and go into the other side. Okay, now we need to make two more connections. We need to connect the second PC. So I'll do the same thing. I'll click on the Ethernet. And the second PC connects to port 18, the second switch. Okay, now the PCs are not going to be able to ping each other yet because we have to plug the switches together. So on the front diagram, we're supposed to connect PC switch one to switch two. And it says use the port number one. PCA goes to port six of the first switch. And it goes to port 18, uh, and PCD goes to port 18, the second switch. So right there on the diagram on the front page, right there. Did you print your lab out? It's right there. Okay, now let's cl click on another connection, and let's connect one to one. So I'll go one to one. Okay, now they're connected together, and it looks kind of like what the diagram looks like, okay? And then we could simply, if you were doing this remotely, you guys are doing this remotely by a packet tracer, you don't have the advantage of getting your real hands on the stuff here in the room lab. I could simply, for example, I could click on the switch and then come up to the console port and then I can do commands like, you know, show, show version or whatever the commands they tell you to do in the lab. Oh, I'm in the configuration mode. Show version. Now, on the PCs, it's slightly different. If you're on a real PC, and let me jump over just a second here to an actual VMware PC like we have around in here. PCA. This is what Windows looks like. You guys know what Windows networking looks like. You go into the network control panel. I've got the shortcut on all these VMs called Cisco Lab Shortcut. And you click, use the following address, and you put in the 192.168, whatever it tells you to put in the lab. Okay. And Packet Tracer, it's real close to that. It's a simulation. Packet Tracer is kind of a macromedia flash simulation of the real world. It's not running the real code. VMware runs the real Windows code. Our switches and routers run the real iOS operating system. The packet tracer runs a logical lines of code simulation of that. It's not 100% perfect. It's about 95% perfect for the purposes of you learning everything you need to do to get your CCNA certification. So let me go back to my packet tracer. And I'm going to go into PCA. And I'm going to click on the desktop and then choose this first uppermost left tab that says IP configuration, and it sort of looks like the Windows one. You know, DHCP, obtain actors automatically, or specify your IP address, and then you put in your particular IP address. So that's how we're going to do it in that particular one. So when you get to the steps, I'm going to do the run up here on the actual, on the actual real equipment that we got. So you guys doing a home packet tracer, you'll go to packet tracer, and it'll sli be slightly different when you do that. I'll do this as, as an example. I'll do PCA as an example of packet tracer. So static, not DSCP. And what's PCA supposed to be? 192.168.1.10. And just like in Windows, if I press the tab key, it automatically fills in the proper subnet mask for me. In this particular lab, there's no routers, so we don't need to put the router there. Now, Packet Tracer has a cool feature that once you've configured something, you can just float the mouse over it, and it'll tell you, oh, look, it's already configured to that particular address. What have we done on the switches? We haven't done this lab. We're not doing no configuration on the switches. But I can verify that my PC is plugged in port 6. Let's see if this is set up. So it's plugged into it. The link lights on this up and up. Okay. Now, before I actually go to the real hands-on on the actual equipment here in the room, one more thing. Cool. Packet tracer physical mode is so wonderful, it's going to blow your mind. Okay, so I'm going to start a new thing here. I'm going to say new. It's going to make my present thing go away. And now I'm going to click up at the top here. It's logical mode is the default. I'm going to click physical. Okay, so we're in. Okay, this physical, physical mode is like the blueprint for the room, the actual room, the actual stuff in the actual position. So I'm going to open up the city. Just click on it. Open up this corporate office we're in and click on the main wiring closet. And up here at the top, it's not labeled that great, but 
you see this thing here that kind of looks like a rack and this thing here that kind of looks like a table? I'm going to put in a rack and I'm going to put in a table. Okay. And let me minus the view. Let me zoom out a little bit so we can see. Oh, that's the smallest it gets. Okay. Let's provision our devices just like we did before. So I'll go down here and I'll click on um, network devices and I'll pick the switch icon and then I'll take a a couple of 2960 switches and drag them into the curriculum. Hey, we're racking and stacking, guys. We actually took them and put them in the rack. We got our lift. We put it in there. Now, this thing at the top here, it's confusing. It looks like a top of rack switch. It's not. It's a power strip. For a time you put the device in there, he automatically puts that in there. I'm going to put the switches down closer to the table leg so I can zoom this view in. You can see it a little more clearly. And let's choose end devices and put our two PCs in there, PCA. And PCB sitting on top of the table because these are not rack not PCs, these are desktop pieces. Now, can I make it bigger so that it's, it's, it's easier to see here, particularly on the people that are watching this on the recorded presentation? The screens aren't that great. Mine's nice a little bit. Okay, so there's our real switch, there's our two real switches, and there's two real routers. And now let's add some connections on here. So I'm going to click on, oh, first of all, let me show you this cool view here. I want to, wait a minute, there, inspect rear, make it bigger. So here's the rear of the switch. Here's the rear of a real Cisco switch. On the routers, all the plugs are on the front. On the routers, we got all the plugs are on the front. Cisco does make some routers where there's some one side and one on the other side. On the switch, all the Ethernet connections are on the front. The connection on the back that we need to pay attention to is the console port. Now, in this lab, we're not going to worry about it. But in the next lab we're going to do next Wednesday, we're supposed to take our PC and plug it to the console port. And then we're supposed to do some commands on the PC, on the, on the switch, to give it an IP address, a management address, so you can tell that or secure shell into it from your uh, PC that you're working on it and manage, really, remote, uh, uh, manage it remotely. Okay, so let's see this cool. Okay, let me go back here. That's the front. Okay. Uh, let's see now. There we go. Hard to make it go away. Make it a little bigger. Okay, now here's the part that really blows me away about the packet twisted physical. So intuitively, you would plug a wire into here and then plug a wire into this. You would plug the two together one to one. Okay, so what's lacking right now for you guys that are virtual is that you can't get your hands on the real equipment and do stuff. And even you guys that are here in the room, I pre-wired this stuff. So what, if you were really doing it, if you had your home lab, how would you plug these things together? So let me go grab a cable. I'm going to click on the lightning bolt thing. And I'm going to grab a, uh, I don't want a baby blue console cable. We're going to use that in the next lab. I'm going to take a copper straight through cable, which is the normal type of cable you would plug from a switch to a desktop PC. Click on that. And I'm going to plug it into the Ethernet plug on the PCA. And I'm going to take it, I'm going to plug into port number six. I've got a dangling wire. How about that? Now I'm going to take the same, another green wire, and I'm going to plug them into the Ethernet port of the second one. I'm going to plug them into port number 18. I've got another dangling wire. Now, we're also kind of supposed to connect these two switches together. And just for visual purposes, I'm going to use a crossover cable instead of a straight through cable, which works just fine these days. In the past 15 years, with auto MDIX, if you use a straight through cable when you should have a crossover cable or vice versa, the transistors and the devices will automatically switch them back and forth. Used to be before about 15 years ago. You had to make sure you use the proper type of cable. I'm plug two PCs together. I'd have to use a crossover cable. No fair. We haven't talked about crossover straight through yet. Comes in a later chapter. So I'm going to go between port number one of the first switch and port number one of the second switch. So we got the dangling cables. Then you can do exactly the same thing you could do if you're in the logical mode. You could click on this and change it to S1. on the PC and change it to 
PC dash B and make it match the stuff that's in the lab. And now when you go back to the logical mode, it's usually all scrambled up like this, but I'll, I'll drag it with her. Makes sense. Kind of resembles on the front page of the lab. So if you're going to use packet twisted physical mode, do the physical rack and stack first and then go back if you want to drag. You don't have to go back to the logical one to, to complete the lab. But it works exactly the same. Now I'm back in the logical portion. I can click on the switch and see the console and do stuff. Or I can be in the physical mode. I can click on the switch, go to the CLI and do that stuff. Okay, so we're set up on Packet Tracer. And now I'm going to go use actual devices here in the SBS 1125 here at South Campus TCC and see how that works. Okay, so I'll minimize this. So here in the actual room, um, hold on, I've got different tenants. A few popped in here. Not logged in. Can you not log in? Hi. Yeah. What's, what's your last name? Smart SMA. Oh, yes. Yeah, okay. Thank you. I got you. Yeah. I, you can, I don't need to reset. I know the password. I just put it in multiple times. Okay. One, two, three, four. Um, By the time I got the right And you're logged in. Good, good. Good. My big brother software, that's how I log in. My big brother software shows up. Remember, you have no reasonable expectation of privacy. You're an attack supported institution here. I'm from the government. I'm here to help you. Oh, you should run screaming in the opposite direction. Okay. Well, I'll allow it. Give me eight hundred dollars. Okay, so here in the room, here's what we're actually going to do. All our PCs in the room have got <clears throat> two COM ports. These will be our console ports. You're only going to use. I think you use one in the lab today for COM one. So let me show you how to connect to that, and then we'll go to the VMs and, and show how that works. So here's TerraTerm. Um, let me go ahead and stop and restart TerraTerm so you can see, just as a review, you guys that were in here with me last time, remember this. I'm going to click on TerraTerm. By default, TerraTerm is set up, oh, no, I don't want a secure shell. I don't want to tell that. I want to be a direct serial connection, you know, like connecting to your pay screeching cat's modem that you had to do with a communication program back in the 90s. I'll click on the serial radio button. And it's already set to COM1. COM1 is the one we use for switch one. I've hardwired everybody's COM1 to their own personal switch one. We got 24 switches in the room here. Plenty of room for everybody. We have a class limit of 12 people to come in the lab. So everyone's going to get their own personal switch one, switch two, R1, R2, PCA, PCB. You get your own personal one. If this was a lab where you did do the second switch, well, most of you guys, it's COM4. Now, COM3 is a fake COM port that our management system uses. You know, where our big brother IT overlords that run everything have to install software and check for viruses and stuff like that, you would check that. But I'm going to leave it on this. And what I like to do is click the setup and the font and change it to 14 size, a little bit bigger, makes it look a little bit better on the projector. Now, when I talked in the lecture on Monday, I talked about what you do when you erase a switch. And it's possible that some of these switches that were last used by the arrogant advanced Cisco guys in the last eight weeks before spring break might have left some settings on there, like some passwords or something. You might need to reset the switch. If there's an existing configuration on the switch, it's probably going to not say switch. It's probably going to ask you to put in a password. Remember our passwords from last time? Uh, Cisco, Cisco class. This is a Cisco class. So the first password to get in the console port is always Cisco. Oh. And the password to go from the user exec mode to the privilege exec mode is always class. And the reason we standardize on that here in the classroom is that someone forgets to do it, you can get in, you can reset it to yourself. We don't have to perform password recovery. That takes a couple of minutes to do this. In the real world, of course, you'll use hard passwords, whatever your password standards are for the company you're working at when you, when you do this type of work. So does this switch have any existing configuration? I didn't really cover this real clearly in the lecture, but I'm going to go to the privilege exec mode by typing enable. Didn't ask me for a password there either. Okay. Whenever you make a configuration on a Swiss, Cisco router or switch and you save it, copy run start, it'll create a file called the startup.config file. So I'm going to sh show me the startup config file, please. It's not there. There is no existing previous configuration on the switch. Now, this is sufficient for a router. All you got to do is is make sure there's no existing startup configuration. And if it's there, erase it and reload the switch. On a, uh, on a router router. On a switch, there's one more thing you got to check. Because switches have the capability of having something we'll get into in a later course called VLANs and virtual LANs. You need to make sure none of them exist. So I'm going to type the DIR command. DOS, guys. DIR, give me the files. 
And I'm going to look for the presence of a file called vlan.dat, V-L-A-N dot D-A-T, and there's not one there. Okay, so we're cool. This switch is ready to go. If it had had a vlan.dat file and or if it had had a startup configuration file, you would have had to delete those, delete vlan.dat or erase the startup configuration, erase start, and then reload the switch, reload. And that takes about three minutes to reload the switch. Yes, sir. Is there a resource available to us that would have the different commands and stuff that we'd be using through the CCNA course? Yes, there's a wonderful book called the CCNA Resource Command Guide. Do I have a copy here? I don't have a copy here. You can find it online. Um, go to the website, um, IT, no, it's, uh, I forget what them, I'll, I'll remember it for you eventually. There's a you can get a PDF of some Cisco stuff. It's called the CCNA Command Reference Guide, something like this. And you can you can buy it for $20 or something like that in the form of a book or a PDF, but you can find the PDFs on the, on the internet for this. Okay, so this switch is erased. It's good, it's good. Now, just for fun, I'm gonna go to the other switch and make sure it's erased because we're using two switches today. If switch one were, not, were erased properly, but switch two had something weird, it's in the middle of the chain between the two devices, it would prevent your mix from working properly. So I'm going to go ahead and start a second copy of character, and I'm going to choose the COM4. You guys won't have to do this today. And I'll make it, make it spot 14 size so it's easier to see on the screen. Put it down here, and then let's go back and um, get the other one back up. So it looks like it doesn't have any configuration. Let me bump it up a little bit. We're just chopping off the end of it. So I go to the privilege exec mode and then show me the, is there any existing startup configuration? No, good, that part's erased. Uh, is there any VLAN definition file we need to kill? No, so we're cool. These two switches are completely unconfigured. 75% of these Cisco switches that ship in the industry are never configured. They just plug them in and they start working. The ones that end up like here at a larger company, oh yeah, we configure them, we give them host names, we give them management addresses. We do that kind of stuff with them. So the switch will work out of the box. That's because Cisco doesn't want people calling their help desk and say, oh, I bought a switch and it didn't work. Oh, you have type no shutdown. They go, what? I don't wanna do that stuff. On the router, they have to do this stuff. Okay, we'll come back to these two in just a minute. Well, we'll come back to the first one and do some commands on the first one. Okay, so page, first page of the lab. We have created the physical lab topology. You guys at home did the packet tracer here in the lab. It's already plugged together in the rack in the back of the room. Con okay, part two, configure the PC host. We're gonna do static, we're gonna do this static information on that. And then part three, we're gonna look at some stuff on the switch. Okay, so I'm going to page three of the lab and it says the devices are powered on in packet tracer that I'm making powered on in the room here, I have them powered on. Switches don't have switches. How do you power on a switch? You can't turn it off. There's no switch on it. Because if you turn this, some jack leg technician would go in the wire closet and turn the switch off. So switches are plugged into a power strip. You can turn the power strip on and off to do this. So we have connected the two switches together. So here's an example of a pair of switches. This is configured to you guys in the grid map. The two switches are connected together. Port 1 to 1. Port 6 goes to your PCA. And port 18 goes to your PCB. And there's 12 pairs of those for each of the 12 lab positions we have that are not X down that you can use here. Okay, so that's been completed. The PCs have been connected to their respective switches. The wiring is probably okay. I usually don't make that bad of a mistake, but we'll find out soon enough if you can't think. Okay, so page four of the lab, let's configure our PC hosts. I showed this in Packet Tracer. You go into Packet Tracer and go to the, uh, 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 what was it called? Did I stop it? You go into Packet Tracer and you click on the device and you click on config, I mean desktop, and then you click the first one IP configuration and you put in the IP address. Yes? Sorry? Oh, we're gonna do it on the real equipment in here. Um, hang, hang loose for the benefit of time and everybody that's watching here, let's get going on the, phys on the real physical stuff. So I'm gonna bring up my VMware. If you're here in the room, you should be using the PCA PCB that are already pre-configured in the VMware. Did I have you do your hookup? I did, you came the last time, it should be still okay. You sat there before. You should, see, you should see your PCA PCB are visible when you start VMware. 
it may give you some nonsense about wanting the upgrade to say no about that. So I'm going to go to my VMware. And here's my PCA. So let me cancel this out and go back for the benefit of I have created the shortcut on all these VMs called Cisco Lab Shortcut. Because in Windows, there's five or six ways to get to anywhere. And this takes you straight to the good part, which is configuring the IP version for If there's any existing address on there, notice this has some existing address on there. I don't want that there. Gonzo secret insider tip of the day to get rid of an existing network control panel. Click obtain, which means via DHCP client, get the address automatically from a DHCP server. We're not having those servers. We're doing everything statically right now. And then click use again to put on your static address. And what is PCA supposed to be for the front page? I'll talk the first page of the lab. I can see it more quickly. 192. And notice on the Windows machine, if I type the 192, I didn't have to type the period or space. It jumped right over to the second octet. 168. It jumped right over to the second octet. Uh-oh, the third number doesn't have three numbers. It's only one. How do I get to jump over to the fourth octet? Well, you can click with your mouse, or you can just touch the period key, which is what I like to do. And he's supposed to be 1.10. And then I'll touch the tab key, and Windows automatically, because Windows, Windows treats you like an idiot, and he fills himself in. So this is completely configured. There's no default gateway. Routers used to be called gateways. Uh, we're going to use a router in, in later lab. So I could just click OK. And then when is you got to click OK again? And then you can click close. If you don't do this in your VM, if you don't click OK, OK, close, the network setting will not take effect and you won't be able to work. OK, so it doesn't tell you this right now, but let's check. I'm going to go to the command prompt, which is this little black dot screen at the bottom. And I'm going to type IP config. Occasionally in our VMware machines, they don't take the effect, don't take the setting properly, and we have to sort of kick them a little bit to get them going. But look, 192.168.1.10. Okay, that's fine. I'm set. I'm set up fine. Good. Now I'm going to set up PCB the same way. Click on PCB. And PCB is supposed to be 192.168.1. 1. Touch the period. 11? Is it 11? Yeah. Touch the tab key and click OK and click OK and click close. Okay, they should be all set up. In the lab, manual procedure they give you the exact procedure for going into windows and do this stuff okay so on page seven we're going to do this uh verification of the setting i did it on pca so let's see if i can do this here like he says to do talk to cmd command prompt it sort of works like he says in the lab And then we're supposed to type the command IP config. If you type IP config by itself, you just get the IP address, the subnet master, default gateway. But he tells you to type IP config space forward slash all, which gives you a bigger report. You get the IP addresses, but you also get like, oh, the MAC address, the physical address, the burning address, the mini address. Sometimes we need to know that. And then we are told to type and from PCA. I got to go to PCA here. So I click on PCA. Ping. Not the Chinese duck kid story, but ping. Packet Internet Grofer or something like that is what it stands for. This is our end-to-end -end reliability test on a network. Can I ping from a location A to location B? Do I have full network connectivity between the two devices? As a whole, with no gaps whatsoever, we use ping. If ping fails, we've got another command we use called tracer, tracer out, which will show us where the division has occurred where we're not getting a connection. So ping 192.168.1.11. Now, sometimes the first one fails. Sometimes the very first ping fails because of something we haven't talked about much yet. We briefly mentioned it in the network essentials class, something called the address resolution protocol. ARP will occasionally cause your first ping or first two pings to not connect, and it will make your heart stop. And then after a second, it'll start working again. And then you can ping again because ARP is on the memory for two or three minutes. So there's a question on page eight. Were the ping results successful? If not, publish it. You're going to write yes there, and then you're going to 
send me the, you know, the Microsoft Word file if you're doing this remotely or turn it in the, in the room here if you're in the room. Okay, now part three, page nine. Using a Terra term. We use Terra term as a standard in the Cisco Networking Academy. Most all the labs assume using Terra term. There are other programs that work equally well. Uh, probably the most world famous one is Putty. It's a console program that allows you to send something to the con to the serial port to the console or Telnet or Secure Shell or something like this. So I'm supposed to go into. I have the server running. I'll still have it running. Okay. And go to from this using a console connection from the switch to PC. So physically, you got. By the way, oh, uh, gotcha, gotcha. Number one, trap number one. Run TerraTerm from your native Windows top. Windows system, not the VM. Uh, in VMs and virtual net and virtual machines, we call the main operating system the host operating system. That's the Windows 10 you log into. It's connected to the blue wire that goes off to the internet. And we call the other VMs that we run guest operating systems. So PCA and PCB are guest operating systems running under the VMware program. And there are other programs designed VMware to do this, like Microsoft Hyper-V, or Oracle, VirtualBox, uh, stuff like that. We just happen to use uh, uh, we just happen to use uh, uh, VMware. <clears throat> so I'm connected to it, and let me go through and do that one more time so I can go through the steps. I'm going to go ahead and kill TerraTerm, and I'll start it up again. I'll have to hide this window to do this. TerraTerm. Okay, so I click the serial radio button. By default, it's set on COM1. That should be fine. And then I'm going to go to additionally to the setup menu and choose the font so I can make the font appear on the projection and on the recorded version a little bit more clearly. So you should see something like this when you use your COM1. If you see something that asks for a password, I'll come and you try Cisco, or I'll help you out when we get to that point. Let's finish the walkthrough and get the recording done. Okay, so on the top of page nine, I'm supposed to go to the privilege exec mode by typing the commands in bold are the ones you enter, enable. Notice the prompt changes from the caret user exec mode to the pound sign privilege exec mode. Okay, now we're going to go into the configuration mode with configure terminal. The shortest, you're allowed to abbreviate commands so long as you don't abbreviate too much. I can't type CT, that's too much abbreviation. If I just type C, he goes, what the heck is C? Well, there's several commands that begin with C. That's not, that's too ambiguous. It's not detailed enough. How about the, how about C O? And notice, by the way, he conveniently prints the line with the C already typed there. How nice of him. The built in context sensitive help is really good. C O N F, it should be enough. I like to use tab completion on the screen so that you can see the entire command fleshed out. And then T tab, there's the entire command spelled out. Configure terminal. You could do it simply with C O N F T. That would work just as good. So here we are at the global configuration mode, and we're going to give this guy a, ho a name. His name is right now switch. That's the default host name of the switch is switch. So I'm going to give the command host name S1. The prompt instantly changes. We are doing commands to the iOS that are being taken place in the RAM memory. So if I was to pull the plug right now and disconnect the power from the switch, nothing had been saved. Think of if you were working on a Microsoft Word document and you haven't saved it yet, and you pulled the plug out of the PC and you lost power. Your document's in RAM memory. Where is it now after the power is pulled? It evaporated instantly. With a one thousandth of a second, it evaporated away. Now, if you click File, Save, and save your document, it's saved on the hard disk drive on your Windows machine. And you can recover it back. And then if, then if the power is lost, you already saved it, it'll come right back. So on the Cisco device, it's it's in the I it's in the I'll do show run. This is what's in RAM. So the only thing we've done so far is we've done host name S1. All the other lines are default lines. Uh, let's show again, let's show the startup configuration. That's not been saved. It's only saved yet. Okay, now I'm going to type a command. Let me go back to the configuration mode. And I'm going to type a command that allows us to, if you if you mistype, uh, uh, have a typing error, sometimes the machine will hang up for a minute. It's upsetting. 
So this is the command, no IP domain lookup means if you mistype a command, he thinks you're trying to tell that to somebody with that host name, a server with that name, how do you misspell it? And he'll go out looking for it. And there's no service like that here and it hangs up for a second. This command, no IP domain lookup, would eliminate that. And if you mistype a command, I'll type a mis literally misspelled command. Immediately, I go back to the prompt. If I hadn't typed that, it would say, MMMM server, MMM server, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? And it wouldn't, you wouldn't get control back for a moment. Okay, now let's do some password protection for this guy. Um, enable, give it a clean config. Enable secret class. That is the password that protects people from going to the privilege exec mode only if they know that it's class. If they don't know the word class, they can't get to the privilege exec mode. And since the privilege exec mode, once you go to that level, you'll never be asked for any more passwords. That's the keys to the kingdom. I could do anything to this. If I was an authorized user, I would make the box run good. If I was an unauthorized user, I would be hosing the box and do need putting ransomware on your system. Okay, now he says we're gonna go and do the passwords on the local console. Line console zero. Now the C abbreviates, and that's a zero, not an O. Password Cisco. And then the command login means allow people to log in if they know the password is Cisco. Now, let me illustrate. I'm gonna log off. And before it went straight to the privilege exec mode, it said switch greater than sign. But now it's not going to even let me get to the user exec mode unless I know what the console password is. And that was Cisco. Doesn't show on the screen. Now I'm at the privilege, uh, user exec mode. Okay, I wish to go to the privilege exec mode because that's where all the fun is. Enable. I have to know that enable secret password. And then here it's always going to be Cisco is going to be the first password. The second password is going to be class. So if you mistype it, let me log off one more time. If you mistype it, this is really low security. I'm like, I'm on uh, three tries and it blasts you off. Just try again. Not very high security, right? We can make very high security if we want to configure it. So basically right now it's like the security mall, the, the, the security cop at the mall that says stop or I'll say stop again. He has no real authority. <laughs> we're going to bring in the SWAT police. Those guys will have authority. They'll stop you. Okay. So it was Cisco, and then enable, and then we're in class. Now we're going to put in a logical message of the day banner. And this is something that when you work for a company or you're a consultant for a company, they will tell you what should be. The electricians, the electricians have been set off the fire alarm the other day I was in here. Okay. I hope they don't do it today. It is a recording. Go to go to my recorded presentations. Go to my YouTube page, uh, PCC-SC-Cisco, and you can hear the fire alarm as I lecture to another class that was happened about three weeks ago. So I'm going to type the command banner. Oops, I'm not in the configuration mode. Configure terminal. Banner, message of the day. And then he says to use the delimiter character, the tic-tac-toe symbol, the pound sign. You can use any delimiter character you want to, just as long as it doesn't appear in the message. Because it, whatever character I type right now, when he sees it for the second time, he will show me what's in between them. So I'll type the pound sign and a space. And he says, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm typing myself a copy. So, pointing Will Robinson to Lost in Space. Press enter key on that. So let's see what happens here. I'm going to go ahead and log off of the machine. And now, before I'm ever even asked for the console password, I get warning Will Robinson. At your company, it will be whatever your lawyers told your company they have to say. Because it used to be banners of the message, they said, welcome to the UTA C programming lab. And then the hackers broke into the lab, and they hauled them into court. And the judge, the defendant says, judge, it said, welcome. And the judge, but well, you guys are free. Get out of here. So all of a sudden now, everybody's messages are no longer welcome you. It's get out of here, you. Or warning everything is tracked, authorized uses alert, whatever the lawyer said. <coughs> Let's 
Francisco, and they will and the passwords class. Okay, now he asks us to save the configuration. Notice that when you're in the global configuration mode, can I try to do copy, run, start? Yeah, copy commands don't work from the global configuration mode. Only configuration commands work from the configuration mode. To be able to do a copy command and show commands, we have to be back at the regular privilege exec mode. <clears throat> My favorite command structure for this is control Z. We'll pop you right back to the privilege exec mode real fast. And then I can type, there's a Cisco annoyance. I went from the privilege I went from the configuration mode to the privilege exec mode. And right when I was getting ready to type something in, it let's ask this. How annoying. I call these things Cisco annoyances. Okay, we want to save the configuration. Now, the total complete command looks like this. Copy, running configuration, startup configuration, startup config. However, most people simply abbreviate this to copy, run, start. That will work just fine. And like Windows treating you like an idiot, you have to press enter again. Sometimes three times. So got Billy being like that on the switch, he makes you press enter three times. Now, if we do show our, our running configuration, we can see I did the host name, I did the enable secret class, the word class has been encrypted. I did the passwords down at the bottom in clear text form. In the lecture on the slideshow, we talked about this command service password encryption. That'll, that'll encrypt those as well. So they're not so easy to read. Now I saved it. Show start. It's exactly the same thing. I haven't made any further changes. It's an exact configuration, exact copy of my desired configuration. Now, if someone were to disconnect the power from the data center and then the power is restored, the switch would automatically, when he boots up, he looks for the presence of a startup configuration file and he applies it. So you don't have to type it in yourself. It's kind of like when Windows boots up. Windows looks for what's in the Windows registry, and he applies your color coordination and your icons and all this stuff the way you like it. So you can customize your own Windows. You can customize your own switch or router to be just the way you like it. <coughs> Sorry? Copy, run, start. Yeah. Copy, running, dash, config, start up, that, start up. Yeah, like copy, Sorry? It's co copy, run, start is the shortest you can do it. Yeah. There's another short one, shorthand command, but uh, that's beyond the scope of what we're doing now. Okay, it says type show version. So show version. Any of you guys ever run Linux? Linux boots up and you see all these lines go off on the screen and they're gone forever? Yeah. Okay. You know, there's a secret command. You can bring it back and you can see all those lines. D message, D M E S G. You type D M E S G, D M E S G from a command prompt, and you can see all the lines where it booted up. You can look for errors or see what's going on. So when Cisco devices boot up, Cisco iOS is written by the old Unix gearheads. You know, the one that Dilbert says, uh, those bearded, sandal-footed Unix administrators. I just want to slap them until next century. They're so arrogant. Cisco devices boot up, and they put all these lines on the screen. When you do a reload, or when you plug them in, they turn them on, and then they're kind of gone. Show version brings them back. So if show version brings me back. Oh, I can see that this is C2960 switch. It's running iOS version 15.2. Uh, it was last rebooted because it, it was powered on. It might have crashed or something. I can see that it has 24 fast Ethernet ports and 2 gigabit ports. Uh, password recovery is enabled. That's good. Sometimes we don't want it enabled. Check out the San Francisco fiber optic ring network guy from about seven years ago who unjustly, in my opinion, under California law, refused to tell his password to somebody else. What do we always, who do you tell your password to? Nobody. Nobody, not even your boss. He finally told it to the mayor. He was sitting in the jail cell. He got a raw deal. So this, we can see a bunch of useful stuff here. What's the serial number in the print circuit board? Stuff like this. He had enabled no service password encryption on all the switches, which is a best practice security measure. And he had a lady boss who he got in a disagreement with. He didn't violate any security policies, but they used an obscure California law and threw him in jail. 
Okay, so step 11, let's check the status of the inner, check out his history. It's, it's uh, 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 display the status of the connected interfaces. Show IP interface brief. So that's my favorite command. Show IP interface brief. Very quickly tells you what's going on and the routing of the switch. What is its interface port numbering scheme? You know, some routers are G00, some are G001, stuff like this. It can be abbreviated as short as this. Show IP interface brief. Okay, end of the word. Now, normally when I type this on the screen, I'll type SH and I'll do tab completion so, you know, it doesn't look like binary garbage to you. So here's switch one. And what can we tell about switch one? Port number six, this kind of looks like that little tracer I showed you for just a second, a packet tracer. Port six goes to your PC-A at your desktop. So port six is up and up. Also port one is up and up because port one of the first switch goes to the port one of the second switch. Repeat steps one. Oh, repeat steps one and two for switch two. Yeah, you do have to use switch two. Okay, so the only difference is to switch two, we're going to configure it as two. So I do have to do that. Let me bring that up. I don't have one echo here. Okay, hang loose. I'll do this. So on you guys here, you're going to choose COM4, which is a plug in USB serial port to serial port conversion. Most PCs and laptops today don't have serial ports anymore. So you generally have to buy an adapter for $10. Okay, let me make him big font. Drag him down more to the bottom. And we'll restore our other one here for perspective. Okay, so the only thing we had to do is repeat some configuration. So I'll do that quickly here. I'll go to the privilege exec mode and say configure terminal and give this guy a host name of S2 and then do enable secret class and then do line console zero password Cisco login and um, enter message of the day pound sign whatever your lawyer tells you to say and then let's go ahead and save that configuration Now if I do a show start, it's saved. There's my passwords, there's my host name, there's all my passwords that I put in. Now, here's the only hard part of this lab is the last last thing that you have to do, which is the chart on page 13. What are the interface statuses for the following interfaces? So I'm on S2 right now. I'm going to do a show IP interface read. One on this switch goes back to one on switch one. So one is up and up. 18, 18 of this switch goes to PCB. Six of this switch goes to PCA. So they want you to complete this chart. And so the first thing where it says status and protocol, up and up or down and down are the words they're looking for. Normally we want a port to be like port one and port six on switch one are both up and up. Up and up. Status, protocol, up, up. That means it's operating. Something's plugged into the wire. The link light's on. We're getting data transmitted just fine. Ports that are unused totally on a switch, they're down and down. The status is down. No wires plugged into it. No link light is on. So port one and port six of switch one are going to be both up and up. Port 18 of switch one, he's down. There's no wire plugged into him. VLAN one, VLAN one is up and up. Uh, we haven't talked about VLANs yet, but in the next week, that's going to be the management address. We're going to assign a management address to the switch so we can tell end into it or do remote management of it from another location over the network once it's on the network and configured. So on switch two, F1 is up and up because it goes back to switch one. What about port six of switch two? There's nothing plugged into it. The status is down down. Port 18 of switch two is up and up because that's what PCB is plugged into. And this will look exactly the same if you're doing this on packet tracer, it'll look exactly the same. And VLAN one, it's up and up. No IP address yet, we haven't assigned an IP address. We'll do that next week. Why are some fast ethernet ports on the switches up? 
This guy wrote this question. Is this English as first language? Why are some Ethernet ports on the switch are up and others are down? Let's just say, why are some Ethernet ports on the switch is up and others are down? Because the ones that have wires plugged into them, well, they're up and up. The ones that don't have wires plugged into them yet, they're, they're ready, but they're down and down. They're waiting for you to plug a wire in. They'll come up in no time at all. And let's see, there is no, okay, at the end of this on page 14, whenever, can I give you guys some credit advice? You do not want to get the advanced Cisco guys mad at you because they can, what was the, what was it, the guy from the intelligence community said, you, you don't want to mess up, mess with the intelligence community uh, because they got six oh, ways from Sundays of, of messing, you up. messing you up. Yeah, so don't get the Cisco guys mad at you. They'll put you, they'll put something that even I can't even do with password and memory. So don't get them mad. That's why I ask you when you're done with the lab, always erase the lab. So on the switch, he gives you the procedure. I talked about this at the very beginning. We're going to see if there's any VLANs created. And let's just review that just one more time. And I'll go ahead and erase the switch, and we can watch the switch boot up. Oh, it's, it's like watching paint dry. It's like watching grass grow. It's so fascinating. Okay, so I'm supposed to look for the presence of, he, he, he's the command show flash, which is totally equivalent to the DIR. The DIR shortcut is for the people that are more used to the DOS Windows operating system. Is there a file there called VLAN.dat? There's not. I'm going to make one just, just to show, show you what it looks like. Okay, so I'm going to go to the config T mode, and I'll say VLAN2. There's a file there called vlan.dat. It's there because I disturbed the default configuration of the switch. Normally, these, most of these switches go into small business, and they're all one big subnet, one big network for the company. Some companies split up, but maybe I want administration in their own private network. I want the marketing people in their own private network. So when you create VLANs on the switch, and that's a subject of another course. Try not to worry about that right now. But it's there because the advanced Cisco boys did it, and now we need to get rid of it. So he says to get rid of it, we're going to delete the VLAN file and bold type it, right? Type the word delete, VLAN.dat, and then you have to press enter three times. One, two, three. Microsoft, it's like Microsoft treating you like an idiot. Now it's deleted. Let's confirm that. Gone from the listing? Well, yeah, I deleted it. And then the other thing we need to do is erase the startup configuration file at the bottom of page 14. We're going to type the word erase. This command is so drastic that you are not allowed to abbreviate it. Remember, you could type copy, run, start, and it would work with the abbreviation. Erase, start. Because you're blowing away the whole configuration. It's too dangerous. So this command, you must type exactly completely out. So you can type the word erase, and then type star or start, and then just tap completed. Press enter. And again, since it's such a dangerous command, let's confirm this by pressing it. Now it's erased. Now notice it's still, everything's still present on the RAM. I deleted the NVRAM. Show start. It's gone now. If I, could, I could do copy run start, bring it back if I made a mistake. Now I'm going to reload the machine. Have you noticed in Microsoft Word, that if you're creating a document in Microsoft Word and then you click the X to make Microsoft Word quit, but you haven't saved your document up to date yet, Microsoft treats you like an idiot. And what does he say? Did you want to save this before you erased? There's one, your one last chance, save it, save it. That's what this is. The iOS has detected that I made some configuration on the device and I haven't saved it. The startup configuration is not up to date with the running configuration. So if you thought you were reloading the machine and you type yes here, it would put it right back and it would make you wait, waste three minutes, minutes and then you have to do it again. So I'm going to say no. I do not want you to restore the configuration, which I just told you to erase, please. Can I just erase the damn thing? And then since reloading is kind of like erasing is kind of a it will take the device out of operation for two or three minutes on the network. There. It's going to reload. Okay, while he's reloading, let's see. Does that cover pretty much everything in the lab? Okay, I didn't mention this at all. In the very last page, page 15, he talks about the prompt there. You say no on the prompt. On well, the very last line, step five, is when the switch finally boots up again it will present you with a dialogue saying, do you want to go into the initial configuration dialogue? 
and we can always answer no to that. We want to type in specific line by line commits. We don't want to, it to go into a guided configuration dialog whether he asks you questions, uh, mostly pertaining to simple network management protocol, and you don't know what to answer. Um, if you accidentally answer yes to that dialog, you can simply control C and it'll pop you out of it. And it'll take a couple seconds, but it'll do it. So what is he doing now? When Windows boots up, he takes the Windows files and he takes them out of the hard disk drive and he puts them in RAM because RAM is a thousand times faster than a hard disk drive. When a Cisco device boots up, he takes the Cisco iOS out of flash. You know how slow a flash drive is. Oh, it's deadly slow. It's 10,000 times slower than RAM memory. He takes it out of RAM memory, expands it into, he takes it out of the flash, the NVRAM, the flash memory, puts it into the RAM memory, and RAM memory is super fast. What's the one thing you can do to make your Windows machine go faster? Put more RAM in it. Put an SSD in it. That'll help. Solid state yeah. Put an SSD and more RAM in it, and maybe your old machine will work well. So he's uncompressing. Okay, he's finished uncompressing. Uncompress and install. And now you get the splash screen stuff. It's like Linux video. So it'll take a few seconds. He's doing the power on self-test, checking for smoke. Is the smoke still in the chip? Good. If the smoke comes out of the chip, the chip don't work anymore because the smoke got out. Can't push the smoke back in the chip. Got to replace it. So it's test, POSD, power on self-test. He's checking all the circuitry, and eventually he's going to finish here, and he's going to come up. And sometimes on these newer switches, uh, if you plug into a switch that's been on for a few minutes, you won't see that startup dialog that he puts you on, this, on, the, on the last of page 15. Do you want to go into the initial configuration dialog? Sometimes that doesn't appear. If you walk away from the switch for a long time and come back, it vanishes. Let's see if we get it. And when you do this on a Cisco router, it's very similar. He expands the Cisco router iOS into RAM memory, and then the routers pretty reliably poke up on the screen. Do you want to go into the automatic configuration that one? Now, status lines, port one, port six, they're alive. He, he can ping now. There it is. Do you want to go into the initial configuration? And if I happen to answer yes by mistake, I'll do it by mistake. What? Management setup? What? What? What am I supposed to say here? What? What? Control C. Take you right out of it. Okay, I am going to stop the recording. Hang loose, guys.